Hi everyone, welcome back. Did you hear my shoulder crack? <laughs> welcome back to um, another monthly wrap up. I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in May and this was the month that I thought I wasn't going to read at all because I was all over the place um, traveling or hosting my parents and stuff like that. Um, but I made, because of that, I like made such a conscious effort to read. Like I was much more aware of like actually forcing myself to sit down and read because I had so many books come in that I wanted to read. Um, so many books come in to the library and I was freaking out and I had already pushed my holds back. So yeah, I made a real conscious effort to read. And then once my parents left and I was like trying to get my life back together, um, I was just kind of so tired that I, just stayed at home and read a lot and I succeeded. I have a lot of books to talk to you about. Some are controversial, some were not great, some were just okay. There are books, there are books that I can talk about. Um, before that, diving in, uh, want to give a shout out as always to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I have been using Squarespace for years. It is a wonderful place to host your online presence. I use it for a personal blog, but they have a ton of other features that make it useful for anything that you are trying to build online. They have the ability to create email campaigns for you. They have a ton of free templates to make your website look beautiful in just a few clicks. And they also have a ton of analytics in their analytics section that help you understand who is looking at your website. It's really just a wonderful service. So you can go right now to squarespace.com and actually check out those templates, build your website for free. And then when you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com slash Carrie can read and get 10% off of your first website or domain. We're going to dive in to the list. Let me pull it up. Here we go. Are you ready? Starting off. I mentioned a couple, a couple books ago, a couple of videos ago that I am still working on a video about dark humor book. And when I was looking at books that I could use for this, the book that kept getting recommended was a collection of short stories called Someone Who Will Love You In All Your Damaged Glory. And I had heard other people talking about it as well. Written by the author behind, what's that show called? Bojack Horseman? Another like very dark humor TV show. And so I picked it up. I read this on the airplane and on various trains in Japan. And I can say this was a solid like 50-50 for me. Every story was really hit or miss. There were some that I really enjoyed. There were some that I, I understood, like I got it. And there were others that I just didn't enjoy. There were a lot of stories. I think like the first the, especially the first one, if I'm remembering correctly, it just kind of hit me as the way of writing and like a lot of the books, the way that I wrote and then a lot of books that I read, short stories that I read in college, like it has that very 2010s, like early 2000s kind of edgelord humor, but like not in a, not in a bad way. Um, it just felt very reminiscent to my university years. So there was this kind of nostalgia going on. Um, they were all kind of, like I said, just dark, reflecting on relationships or how vague, but life. There were a few that I really loved. Most of them, if I'm remembering correctly, like didn't hit for me, but I understand why some people love them because like I said, it was something I would have loved if I was a university student reading it. So that's how we started off the month with someone who will love you in all your damaged glory. After that, I read a book that I'm scared to talk about. Um, <laughs> and I would love, 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 love your input. Like, please don't even hold back with spoilers. Honestly, um, in the comments, like, obviously please put spoilers for Jade City and then, you know, talk about it. Um, but yeah, I read Jade City <laughs> and this is one of those series that I put off reading because so many people speak so highly of it and I just I knew I wanted to concentrate on it and then on top of that it took a really long time for me to get this at the library it was like a 14 week hold or something like that I finally got it and it was not what I expected at all so I think that part of my reaction to it was just it didn't deliver what I thought it was going to be um, it was very different from, from what I thought. So what is Jade City about? It's essentially a book about 
gang warfare. Basically, the world that we're dealing with revolves around this substance that is jade, and if you touch it, you can wield certain powers. And there are people who can wield jade, there are people who can touch jade and it doesn't affect them. Um, there's also this issue where you can kind of go crazy and jade, it's essentially like a drug. You can have like the madness, or I think they call it the itches, and you can essentially just go crazy because of jade. And now adding an actual drug on the scene, there's this kind of synthetic, not a synthetic jade, but it enhances your ability to use jade. It allows more people to be able to wield jade, right? And so we follow one family in particular who are kind of in charge of one of the two main gangs in this area. They're basically, you know, they're like the mob, right? So they protect their lantern men who are loyal to their gang, etc. What did I think about it? First of all, the names were just really hard for me to grab. I don't know why, maybe because I was kind of reading it. Again, I was traveling, so I was picking it up and putting it down a lot more than I usually do a fantasy book. And I feel like with fantasy, and you know how plots leak out of my brain, um, if I take a break from a fantasy book, I forget everyone's names, so it takes me a while. And these names, everyone had, they were introduced by like first name and last name, but then they also had a nickname but then they also had a title, like it was, there were a lot of names. Everyone had like four or five names. I felt like it was just a little too complicated for the life I was leading at the time. And I just, I, I wasn't expecting it to just be kind of a sort of political intrigue mob style fantasy. There were two characters who I actually were like, I'm still rooting for their happiness everyone else I kind of hated and I just didn't care what happened to them because they were such kind of annoying characters and most of them were main characters that I didn't like. Um, so I don't know, I'm putting it to the side for now. I'm still waiting for the second book. It's um, on hold, I'm waiting for that in, at the library. But yeah, um, a lot of people said like, this series ruined me, like it's really emotional and I will say that there were some moments, there was one moment in particular that I was really shocked, but I didn't feel broken <laughs> at any point. So I'm sure you're talking about the like what happens in the series as it continues, but I don't know. I don't know if I connected with it the way that a lot of people did, and I would love to know your thoughts and why I should continue the series because like I said it was a lot for my brain to juggle and I need to make sure that I'm focused on it um, if I want to continue and remember all those goddamn names. So that was Jade City. I mean no harm. Like I understand why some people might love it but let me know why you love it or if you didn't love it because I haven't heard anyone say that they didn't love it and I would like to know that maybe I'm not totally crazy, right? Thank you. Next up, I read The Secrets of Hartwood Hall. This is a standalone Victorian Gothic young adult um, novel. It's exactly what it says it is. It hits every single note when it comes to being this Gothic. I wouldn't say it's horror, but it's definitely um, just a Gothic, very creepy old manor house right? It is about a woman who is recently widowed, if I remember correctly. It doesn't super matter. Does it? No, it doesn't super matter. Anyway, it's about this woman who moves to a new town and gets the role of being the governess for this young boy who lives at this manor called Hartwood Hall, which when she gets to the village, everyone is like, we don't go there. They don't come down to the village we don't go up to the manor house. We can't tell you anything about the family, right? And she's sort of like, mm, maybe people are just weird. Let's give this family a chance. So she starts her work. She falls head over heels in love with the little boy. He is so cute, so charming. It's just the mother and the son and a very small amount of household staff because no one wants to live here and no one will tell her why. So it's 
it's like three or four people really um, who are working there. Things are just strange. She obviously can't go into the east side of the house, but then she starts to see shadows over there, you know. Um, so we kind of unravel the mystery, the secrets of Hartwood Hall, dare I say. Like I said, it did what it said it was going to do. It's very much a gothic novel. If you like creepy haunted houses, there were definitely, there was one time I will say it was a little bit of a letdown because the first time that you really get kind of a jump scare, like you get the night first night in the house kind of creepy vibes, I actually was scared. Like it set the scene perfectly and I was very like, it felt like I was watching a horror movie. And that only really happened once ever since then. There were a couple moments where it was creepy, but after that it, so don't go into it looking for a real horror um, there was quite a bit of suspense, but it wasn't like super gripping, but I enjoyed the characters um, and if that's what you're looking for, you just need like a creepy house story. Secrets of Hartwood Hall did it for me, so. <laughs> After that, I went to go pick up my parents at the airport and their flight was delayed a ton, so I went to the airport bookstore and I live in Korea, so they had um, all of Hong Gong's work, and so I picked up her most recently translated work called Greek Lessons, and I read it in one sitting, waiting for my parents to arrive. This was a odd little book. So I enjoyed The Vegetarian, but I could see why people didn't like it. I loved Human Acts, which shook me to my core. And then Greek lessons, I just didn't, I didn't like it. There were these moments that I liked, but there were mostly moments that I didn't. It's a very short book and it follows a woman who has lost her ability to speak, but she goes to classes to learn Greek. And then we follow the professor of that class and their relationship. I thought there were, there was like a lot of these pockets of really beautiful writing, but as the story overall, I just didn't, really enjoy it and I don't really have much more to say about that. I don't think any of her work will ever hit me the way that Human Acts did, um, but yeah, Greek Lessons was just... didn't, didn't do it. Didn't do it for me and I don't have anything else really to say. <sighs> okay, oh dear. So last time I'm ever gonna talk about this book, um, I finally read Light Lark. It didn't have a hold wait time at my library because I knew that I was showing my parents around and I knew I wasn't going to be able to focus on a book so I was like I don't really need to focus like I, I won't care about this book either way so why don't I just read it. Light Lark has a whole history there's like this lore of how it came to be and like I'm not even going to talk about it I made a I made a video which you can check out it was my most recent video but just in terms of the story average to bad, average to bad. It was, it's supposedly about a world in which there are six different realms and every 100 years this island appears, the rulers of these six realms go there and battle it out to find out who gets to release themselves from their curse, like each realm has a different curse. That's allegedly the plot and it didn't really hit those things. It was just sort of like I said in my other video, and this is completely a self-burn, this was something I was capable of writing, and I'm not a trained writer, I'm nowhere near getting published, I have no interest in being published. It felt kind of like a high school project. There were just a lot of details missing, there were details that were silly, like the names of people. Um, the world building wasn't there like it was just even the the whole idea behind it is that like it's sort of like the Hunger Games right there's all these trials and blah 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 but like they weren't they didn't they didn't really happen like it was uh, basically I thought it was gonna be worse than it was it was readable but it was not good in any way I will give her that it got better towards the end the the beginning was just truly bizarre my brain like couldn't relax because the writing was so strange um so that's light lark if it's available at your library you can give it a try but really it was just sort of a waste of my time like it wasn't even funny bad it was just like so average um 
that's it that's light lark for you the last time i will ever speak of that book okay <clears throat> after that based on a recommendation from books and bow on bookstagram um i picked up scorched grace <clears throat> which I'm really upset about because it had everything I wanted in it. My family, um, both sides of my family were raised Catholic, Irish Catholic. I've got a ton of nuns in my family. Um, and so I grew up around nuns. I love a good nun story. Scorched Grace is about a nun who is sort of like a punk rock nun um she lived a rough life is still this like badass but she's also a nun and she works at the school as a music teacher until one day there is a murder and she's gonna solve it because everyone else seems incompetent and it seems like a real cover-up job and so basically a punk rock queer nun thriller i don't even know how many fingers i need to raise like just checked all the boxes for me and it was really not good <laughs> i was so sad so the beginning had so much potential i loved the catholic imagery that went through the entire book like whenever even if she was talking about something completely unrelated to the church the kind of adjectives the description the descriptive words that she would use all sort of tied into catholic imagery which i can't even explain it but it was just really cool how that was just tied together so nicely but after the crime happens things just sort of dissolve we go into like one of her past relationships uh, i just uh, i didn't like it um so it was a real bummer i think that like i said the beginning the first like 25 percent i was in i was totally committed to this book and then it just really lost the plot for me so a super bummer but if you want to give it a try yourself i would because man just like it should have been really good it should have been my favorite book of the month but um sadly scorched grace meh <laughs> but then right after that i picked up killers of a certain age um which weirdly enough talks about nuns in New Orleans, which is where Scorched Grace took place. I was like, how did I get a back-to-back -back book about nuns in Louisiana? But I did. So Killers of a Certain Age, I really enjoyed this. This was really quick, light, funny. It follows four women who used to be trained assassins. They were essentially Charlie's Angels. Now they are older. They're all in their 60s and they are retiring until they find out that someone is maybe trying to kill all of them. They have to band together and figure out who's killing them. Obviously stay alive, you know. Um, it was really funny like it was just kind of fluffy fun i think it would be a really great um like long bus ride or plane ride or even just like kind of a poolside read it was fun it was a good time there's nothing really more to say it was just about like old lady assassins and i enjoyed it thoroughly so killers of a certain age <laughs> oh my gosh and then after that my fairy book mother <laughs> susan gave me a huge bag of books which is a blessing and a curse <laughs> so i'm working my way through them and i just sort of like picked from the pile what i wanted to read and i read three books back to back to back and we're going to talk about them first up being i have the physical isn't this weird um first up being Divine Rivals. I have heard so much about this book. I have started, this is by Rebecca Ross, who also wrote, I'm looking at it right now, A River Enchanted, which I have started many times and haven't been able to get into it. So many people love that book. So I know that she's a great writer. I just, A River Enchanted for whatever reason didn't click with me. Um, but Divine Rivals I thought was right up my alley. So I picked it up and I devoured it in one night this is a weird one this is supposed to be so here's here's these little words on top says no god no creature no war can come between them so it sounds epic <laughs> it's not epic it's a very slow tiny love story it's about um a girl whose brother has gone off to war and it feels very like the way that it's written feels very like world war ii-esque like i got 
everything I, I was imagining was kind of tinged in green, you know, like very saving Private Ryan kind of color scheme was going on as I was reading this. Her brother goes off to war. She is a journalist and she is trying to get a position at this one newspaper. She is basically an intern and she is up against her rival, a boy who is also vying for the same position. What is happening in the background is there's this war between two gods. So there's this whole mythology to the world, but it really didn't feel like it. Like this was supposed to be like, it's a war between gods, but it really just kind of felt like a 1940s love office romance. And I mean that kind of in like, kind of in a good way. Things happen, our main girl ends up being shipped off to be a war correspondent in a very dangerous area near where a lot of the battles are happening. And it's just a little love story. This is also, a duology. Riddle, like, I thought, am I crazy? But I thought when a book says a novel, I assume that it's a standalone. Like, I, I don't, I thought that's what it meant. But no, no, I get to the end. It is very much a duology. It's a pretty cliffhanger ending, I would say. I'm upset. <laughs> But yeah, it was cute. It's especially really good if you enjoy love letters or letters in general. Oh my god. There are definitely magical letters exchanged and stuff like that. Like a lot of the book is just back and forth letters to people. So yeah, I did really enjoy it. I would have enjoyed it more if it didn't end in a cliffhanger. I thought I was reading a standalone. I know that the gods and the mythology of it is going to come into play in the second book a lot more. So it was just kind of weird to have that background of gods, but then it feeling very like real world, you know? I don't I don't know. It, it was kind of kind of a weird setting, but overall I enjoyed it. It wasn't that deep. I thought it it might have better been served as a standalone. The romance in it didn't feel so strong that I don't I don't know. Um overall, it was good. Um I think it could have had a lot more to it, especially if the whole point of this is the romance. I think it could have been a lot stronger, but such is life. Divine Rivals still totally recommend. Maybe wait a little bit longer for the sequel. <laughs> After that, I read Our Crooked Hearts, which I hadn't heard of, even though I have read The Hazelwood. This is by the same author as The Hazelwood. Our Crooked Hearts. This did what I wanted Hazelwood to do. The Hazelwood is very much like a creepy fairy tale kind of book. I'm not gonna go too much into the plot, but it had those kind of vibes, like just eerie, just dripping in fairy tale. Um, dark fairy tale imagery. Our Crooked Hearts is the same, except it takes place in the suburbs of, I assume, America. And yeah, it's there's a Walmart in it. It's America. It felt so reminiscent of my high school experience. Like, it was, it just, I could picture it so well. Like, the, the characters who are teenagers felt like teenagers. I enjoyed 75% of it. Once we kind of, uh, once a lot of the threads kind of became connected, I was sort of like itching for it to end. Um, but this essentially follows a girl whose mother is a little eccentric. And one day she's driving home from a party and she sees this girl in the woods and she tries to talk to her mom about it and her mom is very much like really like weirder than usual and then to top it all off dead rabbits start appearing on their property and then eventually the mom disappears there's just like clearly this mystery about um this girl in the woods and the mom and we have to figure it out um and yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed it. It's split POV, so we actually do get flashbacks to the mom to understand her childhood and how this all connects. It's very dark, creepy. I think if you liked the last tale of the flower bride, right? Um, very the same kind of vibes, I think, um, as that. Just like eerie, good, just good, good. Dark fairy tale in a modern setting, girls being girls and girls being creepy, right? 
our crooked hearts. <laughs> so next up, I read The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. And I started reading the first chapter and I was like, am I having deja vu? I had actually picked this up because I was going to put it in the cozy fantasy video I made a couple months ago and then I just couldn't really get into it. I read I think the first two or three chapters and I was sort of like, mm, you know, but because I got it as a physical, I had to read it. And I think the way I went into it changed my experience. So I originally went into this thinking that it was going to be a cozy fantasy. The second time I went into it, I went into it knowing that it was a romance, like just a funny enemies to lovers romance book. And that really changed my experience. The world building in here is a little weird. So if you kind of release yourself from caring about the fantasy aspect, it's a better book. Um, this follows Heart and Mercy. Heart is this demigod. It's kind of feels like it's set in like the Wild West. How do I explain this? Basically, he is some sort of like, think of him as a cowboy sheriff kind of guy. And there is this magical part of the world where the gods used to live. And now there's like a bunch of, I don't know, important resources there. So you get a lot of people who go in there, try and take some of the resources, take them out and sell them in the real world. But there's all these like zombie things in there. So if you get killed by one, then you become a zombie. If the zombies get out, obviously that's bad news. So his whole job is to like kill zombies in this magical world, right? And then we have Mercy, who is an undertaker. She runs kind of like a funeral parlor. She and her family like have helped prepare the bodies and you have to like take care of the dead really well um, in order for them to not become zombies. So they're constantly having to work together because he kills the zombies, but he has to bring her the zombies to be like taken care of, you know? Um, they hate each other and maybe that changes. My biggest issue with this, like, oh, oh good. Okay, so I was trying to tell Susan about this one line. Um, also another book, if you enjoy letters, there are lots of letters exchanged in this book, okay? Things I just can't stand in romance books is if you mention the woman's boobs more than like three times, I'm done with this book. And she, every time, mercy walks in we get to hear about her boobs the words enemy cleavage is used like Hart catches himself looking at mercy and he's like no that's enemy cleavage you can't oogle that there's this line in the book that i almost this is on page 77 like we're not that deep into this book okay and i almost put the book down because he's reading a letter and this woman is describing herself as like really loving chocolate and blah 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 so he couldn't help himself. He kept imagining a vague woman in a bathtub, the sort who enjoyed eating chocolate cake and had the full breasts to show for it. I don't think that's how boobs work. Like if you eat a lot of chocolate cake, you have full breasts. I just, Megan, would like to know um like it was just like we got it she's curvy and we were not allowed to forget it we were not allowed to forget it so it was fine um would i read it again no would i pick it up myself i'm not sure if that maybe strikes your fancy fancy of like rugged western zombie hunter and like cutesy eccentric but also badass undertaker um <laughs> the undertaking of heart and mercy did not sell that to you at all. My bad. <laughs> After that, I was back to my ebook life and I read Fourth Wing, which I hadn't heard about until people started mentioning it in my comments. And then once I knew the title, I saw it everywhere. It took over Bookstagram. It was like everyone's favorite book. And people I trust and people who are real fantasy people were rating it really high. And so I was like, I gotta, I, I gotta know. Like I've been reading, as you saw, like kind of meh books this whole month. I was looking for something to like change my life and it didn't. <laughs> um, Fourth Wing was fine. Um, this was a book about a society that 
has dragons and the soldiers like bond with their dragons and they you know protect the realm right and to become a rider is really really difficult and so they have this school where you go to all different you can either become a scribe or you can become a healer or you can become a rider as you enter each of those units or whatever you have to go through tests until you graduate and become an actual scribe healer or rider and for the riders like something like 80% of the students die before they graduate and then you're probably going to die afterwards because you're a soldier so it's just like a pretty gruesome book and she did put a trigger warning in the beginning about how there's going to be a lot of death and dying in it and a lot of characters die like more than I thought would die died so there is that but we follow a girl who she has always wanted to be a scribe she has trained to be a scribe but her mother is one of the generals and her mom is basically like nope our family are riders and she suddenly has to change and go to the riders academy training thing i will say that a lot of people have said that it does have really good chronic illness slash disability representation. Our main girl, her mother had this fever when she was pregnant with her. And so she has just kind of really brittle bones. So kind of throughout the book, she's constantly like a little thing will hurt her. Like her shoulder will dislocate or something and she has to deal with that. Apparently that was really good rep. I wasn't sure. So I'm glad to hear positive feedback from it. It was toted as this like love triangle enemies to lovers thing i don't think it delivered on either of those fronts it felt very reminiscent of the hunger games where most of us i will say 99 percent did not enjoy gale <laughs> there's a gale character um in this book yeah the world building was just kind of sloppy this is this author's first fantasy book she's um a notorious romance writer it will be interesting to see how it continues as a series but in terms of like the twists and blah 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 like it just wasn't a really really great book like i said it in my other video it's funny that it felt very of the same caliber as a lot of kindle unlimited enemies to lovers fantasy romance books that i have read so it's quite interesting that this is getting hyped by people who i think not look down upon but definitely avoid the kindle unlimited enemies to lovers romances which i've read a plethora they're hit or miss but i felt like it was like of the same vein so good thing is there are this is bringing in people who are new to fantasy so if you really liked fourth wing the good news for you is that there's tons of books that are just like it or better for you to discover so i'm really happy for you welcome to the genre but for people who are more fantasy people i think it was exactly that there are books just like it and better there were parts of it that i really enjoyed like i could kind of pay less attention to the bad world building because there were moments that i had fun with but there were a lot of moments i didn't and i ended up skimming a lot of it yeah i will say that if you go in with the expectations that i did and I said this in my previous video, the hype killed this book for me. I think if I went in being like, this is going to be just another romanticy book, I feel like I would have been like, yeah, that's, this was fine. This wasn't a waste of my time. But because I had those really high expectations, this book felt worse than it was, if that makes sense. That was Fourth Wing. Don't totally write it off, but would I buy the $30 physical version? Absolutely not no that's my those are my two cents about fourth wing <laughs> after that i read the honeys in like one and a half sittings i read it like all through the night and then i woke up early and i read all through the morning and finished it this was a creepy book this is a summer camp horror story um it follows our main character whose twin sister the book this is this is the first page of the book so this isn't a spoiler but basically um twin sister comes home and attempts to murder our main character mm. and so obviously something is wrong and so how our main character reacts to this 
is they're gonna go back to the summer camp that Caroline, their sister, Mars and Caroline, I remember their names, look at that. Mars is gonna go back to the summer camp that they both went to all the time, but for some reason, Mars stopped going and Caroline kept going. And there seems to be some kind of riff caused by that. But we're gonna go back to the summer camp because her friend group is creepy as hell and we're gonna get to the bottom of what drove Caroline to murder, to attempt to murder her twin, right? It's very creepy. This is a summer camp up, I think it's upstate New York. Um, it is a summer camp of like the very, very old money kids. It's just like secrets upon secrets upon secrets. I will say it was a little confusing because a lot of it hinges on these scenes that are either dreams or hallucinations. There's a lot of kind of hallucinations and then it gets more and more kind of complicated. <sighs> There's a lot of out of body experiences. Overall, I enjoyed it. I think that there was a point where it got a little bit too long. The ending was camp as hell, like camp, not summer camp. This was a wild ending um, and yeah, I enjoyed it. It was truly bizarre. Our main character is also non-binary and so we have that whole issue of the camp is divided into boys and girls and we learn about maybe why they left the camp and stuff like that. So yeah, it was just like a lot of really interesting things going on at once, but it's kooky as hell. So just like be ready for that. Um, yeah, I thought it was a really good summer book. Like the way that summer is described was really excellent. So anyway, that's The Honeys. I recommend only if you're okay with like psychedelic kind of horror and bees. <laughs> After that, it was reaching the end of the month, and so I figured I just wanted to read books that I knew I could read in one sitting, and so I started a thriller that I put on hold, and I don't know, it, it must have like just come out, so I don't know who I heard about this from, um, but here it is. It's What Lies in the Woods. Apparently this author has written a ton of thrillers. I think this was my first thriller by them. This was super predictable. It fo it follows, how do I explain this? Basically there are three best friends um, and when they were 11 years old one of them got stabbed like 17 times and somehow managed to live. They pointed the finger at a serial killer. This is taking place in the Pacific Northwest where serial killers thrive and so they sent this man to jail fast forward almost two decades later and we get a phone call that that serial killer has died in jail from old age and cancer. Our main girl, who was the girl who got stabbed, returns to her hometown to meet up with her best friends again and one of the friends says that she has some news that can't be shared over the phone. That news tips us into this whole adventure. Did we frame the wrong person? What did we really know about what happened in the woods 20 years ago, you know? The beginning, there was a lot of potential because it's very much like, it's supposed to be all about little girls and their games and how like little girls are such wild, creepy things and I totally agree. Um, and so there was a lot of potential setting it up, but then once every character was laid out on the board, 50% of the way through, I was like, I know how this ends. And I sort of read it to just confirm I was right. And I was right. Um, it was one of those that was so ridiculously predictable. And sometimes it's okay to have a predictable plot if like the other elements of the story were interesting, but nothing else really was. The relationships between the characters, all of the characters were really imperfect, morally gray. I didn't enjoy reading about any of them. There just wasn't anything in this book <laughs> that I enjoyed, but I did feel pretty damn good about solving the whole damn thing. So, but yeah, that was What Lies in the Woods. I would pass on that. I feel like I've been saying that about a lot of thrillers that I've been reading recently. So if you have like a good thriller that you really enjoyed, please let me know because I miss them. But yeah, I feel like I haven't read like a really good true thriller in a while and I would like to. So, thank you. <laughs> and then finally my last book, I read it last night. Did I? Two nights ago. Anyway, oh yeah, two nights ago. Um, 
I read Heart of Stone. I don't know where I found this. I think, I think I found out about it when I was looking up books for my cozy fantasy video that I mentioned that this was going to be a part of, right? I was told about this and the cover is really ugly. I had already had like quite a few books on the list and I was like, I just don't have time to read another 300 something page book. Let me just film this video. I'll read this another time. Here is the other time. Heart of Stone is real cute. I'll give it that. This is about, <laughs> how do I explain this? It takes place in the 1700s in England, specifically Birmingham, and it is about a vampire that needs a new secretary, and he gets this guy who's really not cold but just very professional he doesn't believe that a secretary like a secretary should just come and do his job and like take notes like the vampire will dictate letters to him right um so that's what he's there for but our vampire is like super bubbly and loves to chit chat and so he's always like so what's your favorite color and the secretary is like i find all colors equal like I, I couldn't say. His, his big line is, oh, I couldn't say. He doesn't have opinions on anything and it drives our vampire insane. Obviously our secretary doesn't know that he is dealing with a vampire, he's just dealing with a weird kooky boss, right? So most of the book is really just our vampire character trying to break down the walls of our secretary. It is split into two POVs and so we get to know what goes on behind the scenes of the secretary a little bit more and I loved them both so much. It was just adorable. I think that there was a huge chunk of it that could have been taken out. There's a whole thing where again with the letters there's a whole like letter exchange going on with like a third party character and the whole joke is that that character writes really long letters and the vampire hates him because how annoying to write like 12 page letters but we have to read multiple 12 page letters and they don't really matter to the plot like no spoilers but like you could have taken them out and it wouldn't have made any difference so I think that there were just a lot of things I would have taken out like there's kind of this third act where we suddenly get introduced to like more vampires and I also felt like that could have been taken out but just simply the relationship between the vampire and the secretary um, was really cute and I really liked it. So if you're okay with a book that you are willing to skim, if you start seeing letters being written, skip them. Um, and if you start feeling yourself skimming in the 75% mark, it's fine, nothing happens. The first two thirds and then that last little chunk real 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 cute um i don't know why the cover is the way that it is i wish it had changed but heart of stone is a really cute little fantasy and i enjoyed it <laughs> so anyway um that was how i ended the month and i'm very happy with it so yeah this was a very mixed bag of a month but that was my may and i would love to have your recommendations down below what do i have currently up oh i have started reading the shadow of what was lost can you see that um i have started reading that and i got i just got the second one in today i believe that this was recommended to me at the prog meetup calf i think um if this was you i'm 25 percent of the way in and it's quite interesting. So The Shadow of What Was Lost is my current read for the start of June. But anyway, I'm going to leave you here. So once again, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this. Info down below, but you can go to squarespace.com slash carriecanread to get 10% off of your first website or domain. I promise this is the month. Um, the rains have already started. It's been raining for like three days here. It actually just cleared up, so it's actually really gorgeous out today. But we're gonna have a really, really rainy summer, and so I am prepared to stay inside and film my mortal instruments plot summary video i promise you i've gotten a lot of messages i have the script ready i just need to get the fan art done and film and edit it <laughs> so um it will be coming to you i promise you by the end of this month you have my word just the first book the mortal instruments there you go 
Um, so yeah, I will catch you guys next time. Thank you as always. Yeah, let me know your thoughts. Tell me about Jade City. Make me continue it. You guys are very persuasive, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, all right. So see you next time. Bye. <laughs>